10 years ago, uh, a bloke got out of a Nissan Leaf in this very car park wearing this very jumper, not realizing that 10 years later, he would be here doing exactly the same thing. It's a strange, strange world. So today we're gonna to explore how my YouTube channel has existed for 10 years, how we've somehow put together 1,597 videos, including this one you're watching right now. And we're gonna talk a bit about how the Nissan Leaf and indeed electric cars have changed over the past decade. There's a lot to cover, so we better get on with it. Why do modern cars beep so much? So yes, modern cars do beep a lot. And uh, that's something that uh, has not changed. I seem to remember the first generation Leaf was also a bit beepy. Uh, put her into drive and uh, away we go. Just as I said back in the day. And uh, in truth, that novelty of electric cars, the whole stopping and there being no sound other than the heater, yeah, is something I still very, very much enjoy. Uh, we're going to head up the road to Kermustworth because uh, that's where I did the opening driving scenes uh, in that video 10 years ago and uh, I think it might be nice to go and um, just revisit. It's a lovely part of the world. Got to be a bit careful coming out of this car park. It's got a bit roughed up since I was last here. This is the Havod Hotel in Delsbridge. That's the road it's beeping at there. Such was the angle of our departure. Yet more incessant beeping but yeah I find it quite astonishing that 10 years ago I decided to put a camera in a Nissan Leaf to record my experiences and 10 years later that's what we're doing just like then I didn't script anything I didn't write anything down which is a bit unusual uh, at the time I was working as a freelance motoring writer so writing is very much what I did but uh, when I was writing, I didn't really plan too much either. I just let my fingers start flying and features came out. Uh, it's something of a gift. Sorry, that's the um, tripod being thrown around. Uh, but I'm fortunate to have. I can just make words happen in some sort of order that seems to make sense. Uh, I guess I read an awful lot of car magazines when I was younger, a lot of reference books, watched an awful lot of old Top Gear. Uh, as it was, proper sort of motoring factoid type program back then. And uh, I guess that some of that rubbed off on me. But yeah, this feels very strange. I can't really believe it's been an entire decade since I did this for the first time in this jumper. I'm pleased the jumper survives. Me and this jumper have been through an awful lot, as has the channel. Uh, it's changed immeasurably. What began as just a little casual hobby uh, a way for me to try and explore things that don't necessarily work in print. You can describe what an electric car feels like to drive, but actually the soundtrack and that silent stopping I felt needed capturing. And since then I then thought, well, I write a lot about classic cars, but some, some of the sounds and experiences, again, are very difficult to put into words. Whereas if you just have a camera running, you can hear what it's all about. You can see the excitement of the driver at the actual moment the excitement happened not them talking about it days weeks later so uh, it's a very different experience so the channel broadcast its first video as classic hub on the 4th of december 2013. Uh, i had got a little channel in fact i think it still exists yan 2 cv is still up there it's got um, a, a few random clips including a very very well driven tr7 v8 at a slowly sideways demonstration at Silverstone Classic one year. Uh, but uh, again, that was just throwing stuff up there just because I had it. It wasn't really um, planned content. And while the Nissan Leaf wasn't really planned content, I, I set out to make a video about my experiences driving it. And uh, I think I, I largely managed to capture that. Coming past the arch up here at Comesto. In fact, we'll just pop in here. Uh, this is um, one of the many um, uh, viewpoints in beautiful mid Wales. So there we go, this is the arch um, up near Comestworth. It's been restored since I first moved here 10 years ago. It was starting to look a bit sad for itself, but fully refurbished. The road used to go through it uh, a long time ago, but then they blasted a new section through because the um, logging trucks were having a little bit of difficulty. But yeah, 
a glorious space here. Um, people who've had the calendar may recognise this spot. I think we um, one year had a picture of Fox Anne parked right here. I've been up here and posed with Took as well. Such a beautiful landscape. And if you um, drive, uh, I can't remember if it's this one or that one down there. There's a, a track here that takes you to the My Heron Rally stage um, that used to be part of the World Rally Championship. Uh, I um, helped the locals man the gate here one year. That was cold and not a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful spot. The mines of Kamustworth are a fine spot to stop and talk about the looks of the Nissan Leaf. How has the Nissan Leaf changed over 10 years? And the truth is, while it looks like quite a lot has changed, actually not much has. Uh, it's a very clever facelift. We've got a completely different front end treatment without the enormous headlamps that went almost up to the windscreen. A bit of a shame. But uh, this area here, is very similar to the previous generation. I think it hints that this is a clever sort of reskinning. I do believe the wheelbase is very slightly longer. Uh, there's about 35 mil in it, so a little more space inside. But generally, they tried to make the leaf look more normal, and I guess they succeeded. It no longer looks so odd and weird, and uh, that is a change. And I'm not necessarily sure it's one for the better. I think the wheels on this example are particularly. Um, Horrible, really. I don't like them at all. Uh, very nasty. But uh, is the Leaf still good to drive? That is the main thing. And does it drive like what I remember from 10 years ago? Well, how does it drive? For a start, when you power it on, it no longer makes the horrible beeping noise that used to drive me absolutely up the wall. A little playful jingle that I never requested nor desired in the slightest. Uh, the automatic wipers are still a bit rubbish. You have to intervene on occasion. Uh, but we've got in this Tecna specification, we've still got a heated steering wheel, heated seats, heated seats in the back as well, incidentally. And uh, yeah, this odd little control nodule that I completely failed to film last time. I think I filmed it slightly out of sequence. Let's do the same again. I think that's mission accomplished. Uh, going into forwards. Unfortunately, we've got an electronic handbrake, but I guess the good thing is you can just turn the thing off. I'm actually going to turn around because we want to go back up uh, into Kamustworth, the village again. Just came out here just to get that scenic shot. And this is where you start feeling that extra wheelbase rather a lot. Uh, it's quite a long car to turn around. And the steering lock is not superb. But uh, yeah, it just drives as nicely as I, I remember. It is an entirely numb driving experience. Uh, the steering is utterly, utterly dead and over assisted. I don't like that, it's very Japanese to just have nothing going on. And apparently European models were tuned to be more dynamic. So how dead were American and Japanese market ones? Perish the fort. But it is interesting that the Leaf was kind of one of the first mass produced electric cars and it has been a very successful one. Like I say, this is still fundamentally the same car, I think. McPherson strap front suspension, good old twist beam on the back and the battery pack sits nice and low uh, between the axles. But I mean, that, that is worth talking about in itself, the battery pack, because that first one I drove had the 24 kilowatt hour battery pack. It had a range on optimistically in the midst of winter as we are here and the word N, uh, it had a range of 60 miles. Uh, this car currently has a range of 73 miles, but the battery is at 37%. So I've used most of the battery and I've still got way more range than those early Leaf models. This one has a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack. So that's like more than two and a half times uh, as the capacity. And it fundamentally changes how you use the car. The great irony is um, when I got that electric car in 2013, it had to be delivered on a truck because they simply couldn't get it here any other way. And then because there were no rapid chargers, and no chargers at all really anywhere in the local area, uh, there was nowhere I could really go. The furthest I could drive from home was about 30 miles to make sure I could actually get back home again. And that's also having to factor in the fact that 
uh, I lived at the top of a hill. So if I went down to Aberystwyth, say, I had to factor in the fact I would be using more energy to get back up uh, than I would going down. But yeah, it's uh, amazing how the world of EVs has changed. They haven't taken over and a lot of people are very scared that they might do entirely. I don't think they will. I think synthetic fuels have their part to play. And uh, I've never been drawn to the LEAF for environmental reasons. I just like the driving experience because having something edgy and roughy and fun is great uh, when you want to enjoy yourself, especially on the roads around here. But especially now I'm a bit older and uh, I'm a stepdad, uh, I just need a car that will get me from A to B with minimum fuss. And this car really does that. Uh, you just uh, plonk it in drive and off you go. Two pedal driving. In fact, it's single pedal driving because I've currently got the um, e-pedal uh, connected up. Um, so e-pedal is one pedal driving. If I lift my foot off the brake pedal, we come to a stop and it holds hydraulic pressure to um, keep the car here. And then I just press the pedal again and away we go. The last bit of um, throttle travel is actually to modulate the uh, regenerative braking to um, slow you down or speed you up as you need to. And uh, I love that. I mean, driving does not get more simple than turning a wheel and moving one pedal. And I love it. Uh, I guess I just need a bit of comfort in my life. And uh, yeah, when you just want to get somewhere, it's got LED headlamps, they're absolutely superb. Main beam's a little weak, but uh, the fact that the headlights are so bright makes up for that. So, uh, yeah, it's fundamentally a lovely driving car. And the charging situation has begun to change as well. The National Library of Wales, where I used to go and do research when I was doing my um, journalistic work back in the day, uh, now has the largest bank of chargers in the UK. So I think we're going to head there next and see if we can get some juice. Uh, I don't need to panic yet, we're at 36%, 71 miles of range, but uh, it might be nice to grab some fuel before we um, head home, uh, as I sadly don't live in this bit of Wales anymore, but I'm reminded how spectacularly beautiful it is. But I'm just going to pay homage as we come along here, uh, because I can't tell exactly where, I think I know where, I think it's somewhere near this post box, but the intro of that very first video saw me pull in, talk about how the car is so very very quiet and then I pulled away again and that house is where my friend Bruffon who I've just driven past is um, busy putting Christmas lights up in the village uh, he used to live in that house until 1960 I think 1961 and he went to school in the village so uh, a nice bit of a connection there hello Bruffon if you're watching and uh, his family indeed but yeah, it's, it's lovely to be back up here. I do miss these roads. It's just utterly gorgeous. There's beautiful rock everywhere. We're just going across a lovely little bridge here. And uh, with the trees and everything, the trees have changed. I've chopped a lot of trees down since I moved here 13 years ago. So I never started Hubnut as a channel, really. I never intended for it to um, go where it did. You're always hoping it might happen, but uh, yeah, that's kind of the same with everything, isn't it? If you learn a musical instrument or learn to sing, you might hope to be in a big famous band one day. It doesn't mean it's gonna happen, but lots of people have the dream. And uh, my dream was eventually achieved through an awful lot of hard work. Uh, the channel really wasn't very much at all in the first uh, couple of years. I, I filmed a few tests, but very, very sporadic. But by 2015, um, I think it was Andrew, I think it's Andrew, um, told me I should monetize. Uh, so I did. And it took me nine months to earn my first £60 payout from YouTube. I'm not going to tell you how much I've earned since, but it's quite a lot. And most of it has been spent incredibly badly on terrible automotive choices. So, uh, yeah, that's nice. But yeah, as we go back up the road to come back down to Devil's Bridge, uh, I'm just reminded how many times I've driven this road and how much fun I've had driving cars which have 
far more communication through the steering than this car does. And of course, took the Invercar, some of her first drives would have been on these roads as well. Uh, lovely little Tuck, one of the heroes of the channel. And of course, none of this did I predict when I started putting cameras in cars 10 years ago. Um, in fact, I could not have predicted anything, which makes life fun, because I have no idea where the next 10 years are going either, and where I'll end up. It's just, yeah, you just don't know. And uh, I guess the ultimate uh, moment on the channel so far was the New Zealand and Australia trip. Uh, that was something I sort of began to dream of as the channel began to build. I was just like, this may allow me to have a very stupid adventure. And it did and I had an amazing time. Uh, almost broke myself, in fact I did actually break myself because I was just uh, trying to do too much in too short an amount of time. Five months sounds like a long time when you're just thinking I'll be out there for that long, but in reality it proved not to be enough time at all. Uh, yeah, oh gosh, it's beautiful around here. And there goes another electric car, which is something that definitely didn't happen 10 years ago. There were no other electric cars in this area at all. They just made no sense at all. And really, you couldn't get anything else either. Um, the following year, uh, we took a Nissan E NV200 all the way down to uh, Devon and back, which was utterly horrific. Same battery pack as the Leaf, but heavier, less aerodynamic, uh, with a poorer heater. So we had a miserable cold journey, just about eking 60 miles out of a charge. It was horrible. It's a, a, about three hours longer than normal to get down to Devon. Whereas now, I, I could almost do it in one charge in this car, I think. This has a claimed range of about 220 miles. So no, I couldn't do it in one charge. I would still need to, one stop along the way. But uh, yeah, like I said, the, the charging situation has improved. It is still far from perfect. Uh, I feel there are still more um, electric cars than there are chargers and they're expensive as well back when I got the leaf it had an ecotricity electric highway card in it free electricity but I couldn't get it to a free charger uh, that was the annoying thing we, we, we did manage it in um, I think it was 2015 I took uh, an e-golf all the way to Hollyhead right at the top of Wales and just to prove it could be done. That was the first time I did 350 miles in a day in an electric car. And uh, yeah, it was nice to discover it was possible. But uh, yeah, it's been quite the experience and it's quite emotive to be back in this area. We're back, that's the car park on the left, just there where the channel began. Yeah. And then I think I did go this way in the Nissan Leaf. We went right down here at the Havod, which has changed hands. It used to be run by my uh, friends, Becky and Martin, and they did a lovely job. Uh, across the three bridges here in Devil's Bridge uh, after this truck. Nice old Volvo. So, yep, the three bridges. This is the top one. And all this has been rebuilt um, since I came through here as well. So, uh, yeah. Things have changed and things have remained the same. But obviously my life has changed immeasurably since um, I started the channel. In truth, I was not in a very strong financial position uh, back uh, 10 years ago. Uh, the writing work was very sporadic and that's kind of why I was starting to explore video. It was just um, other outlets for my creative talents and uh, thankfully it did work very well. Oh, here's Woodlands, a uh, very fine caravan park run by Alfie and Vicky and uh, I've taken photos in there of the Honda SMX. There's another car that was on the channel back in the day. But yeah, I think we came this way just so I could accelerate up this hill. Eco mode off. <laughs> that's up a very steep hill doesn't do much for your range but it is good fun and that torque is what I love about electric cars oh we've got hedge trimming going on need to be a bit careful here see under the tractor if anyone's coming let's hope we don't get a puncture bits of sharp twig all over the road at this point 
And that's another change. This 62 kilowatt hour leaf has much more power. Uh, I forget the figure. I shall ping it here compared to here is uh, what it used to be. So much more powerful, uh, which has its downsides, if I'm entirely honest with you. And I'm going to find somewhere to try and demonstrate that to you. Now, the battery pack is also quite heavy and you feel that. The ride 7% stiffer than the um, lower spec battery and uh, you feel that too. The ride can be a little jiggly at times. It's not enough to be unsettling, but uh, yeah, you definitely know about it. So uh, I'm just gonna pull in over here. And we're gonna do a full bore acceleration. Well, that's the traction control. Yeah, that 60 comes up nice and quick. 6.2 seconds is alleged. I don't think I've got near that. And one of the issues is you can get horrendous amounts of torque steer. It's a bit like driving an MG Montego Turbo from the 1980s. It's pulling you all over the place. It's ironic, but when, as soon as I've got a camera running, it doesn't seem to talk steer at all. But it has been horrendous. When the road's slippy, this is quite grippy um, surface. It really does fight you and you have to hang on. It feels very skittish. And uh, again, you think, does it really need that power? I don't think it does. Uh, it just seems a bit overkill. So again, I'm just lifting off and we're regening. I'm not touching the brake pedal at all. I very rarely touch the brake pedal in this car. Uh, even around town, you can just ease off and the car will come to a halt with that one pedal lift. Over the hump, we Down to a spot where once I had to help a girl who'd rolled her Hyundai i10, I think it was, onto its side. Uh, right at this spot here, oversteered, understeered rather, into that tree. Uh, she was shaken up, but otherwise, unharmed so that was good but yeah by probably 2017 is when i started feeling the channel got some really good momentum we'd done the 2cv restoration and of course later in 2017 i acquired the invercars and uh, shout out to haggerty insurance uk because again it was a very tough time financially uh, i'd bought the cars but couldn't actually afford to get them home oh, i just realized um uh, that was from Erebarve Farm, that was Priscilla. Uh, the other extremely good campsite in Devil's Bridge, Erebarve, a little bit out of the town. Very nice, you should check it out. But yeah, and uh, 2017 is when I started thinking, okay, there's something in this. I was still doing the magazine work, I was doing editing uh, magazines as well. But uh, just starting to feel that the world of magazines was starting to die off. I was been asked to do so much for so little with so many controls and so much to think about. And I was kind of single-handedly making the magazines. You could afford writers for a couple of features, but I was having to write most of it myself. And the hours and hours I was putting into it, it just didn't feel sensible anymore. So uh, I'm having to do 20 miles an hour because we're in Wales. And uh, obviously that is the speed limit um, in urban areas. And this counts as one apparently, it's not very urban, but nonetheless, the speed limit has dropped. So yeah, it was a perilous financial situation again. And uh, the channel would then have only been delivering a few hundred pounds per month, but it obviously helped, it made a difference. And uh, 2018, things started building up to the point that I began to dream of going full time with it. And it was the merchandise that really helped drive that. Oh, I can do 30 on this bit, ooh, luxury. Uh, just going past the uh, BP garage here in Pontewid. We don't need to fill up there. I don't see any electric chargers. Although some BP garages do have them. We've still got 58 miles of range to go, 31%. And uh, that's because I've been hammering it a bit, I think. But uh, we're now following the A44 as it snakes its way towards Aberystwyth. A road uh, bedeviled by speed limits all over it now, but uh, that's because people keep crashing in quite spectacular ways. Yeah, you don't have confidence cornering in this car, but nonetheless, that torque, oh, just lovely. Who the Fortier, a man who has so many feeble cars, actually likes torque. And to, in truth, that's probably why I like Betty my Ford Fairmont. 
again, there's something I couldn't have predicted um, 10 years ago, but I would go to New Zealand, drive an Australian car around quite a lot of New Zealand, and then bring it back to Wales. Astonishing. But yeah, that car has torque, and I like torque going to do a full review on this Nissan Leaf. It has been provided by Nissan as was the one we tested 10 years ago. Um, I'm not sure why they decided someone with a fairly terrible low volume vlog. No, not even a vlog, a proper blog with a burr like in the olden days. That was the original classic her blog. I know some of you have been around since those days and uh, yeah, Nissan didn't do too too much checking just went yeah 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 we'll, we'll we'll let you have a nissan leaf for a week and thank goodness they did because look what it kick-started i do wonder if i would have ever felt the need to do the same if it hadn't been for the nissan leaf so i, I think i changed the name in about 2015 because there was so many electric cars starting to come through the channel because i i developed a love for them i still have a love for electric cars i love the purity i love the quietness I love the zero emissions at point of use. Obviously, there are other emission questions about uh, the uh, EVs and then the build and everything. There's a lot to consider. I don't just think these are a magic pill to make the world a better place. I think they play a part in it and uh, have a profound effect in cities and urban areas where there's lots of traffic. If you can have that traffic using electricity instead, surely that is better. Uh, for the health of the people who live in, in towns and cities. But, uh, yeah, back then people were saying, oh, no, th these electric cars will never work in the countryside. They're only for towns and cities. And um, I'm glad the world is proving them wrong. There are plenty of electric cars in this area now, and they work really well. All that lovely regen, as we're doing now, we're charging the battery up as we go back downhill. It's good times. Thank you to everyone who has supported the channel over the past 10 years. It, I, I still can't quite believe it. I've never done anything for that long. Uh, yeah, it's a remarkable amount of time. And uh, it's been fun to capture the ups and downs of my own personal life, uh, as, as well as bringing motoring entertainment to the masses. And I'm so, so proud of the lovely following we have on Hubner. Um, people come to our socials, they make new friends. It's a lovely supportive world and uh, very, very refreshing. And uh, everyone who comes to the meetings, so tolerant, so friendly. Uh, we have such diversity and I absolutely love it. I could not have predicted that at all when I began this channel, challenge, uh, channel 10 years ago. But that sort of thing would develop such a beautiful following. So thank you to all those who come to the meetings, who take part in live chats, uh, who leave bleep bloops down there in the comments, as comments even, not comments. Uh, yeah, it all means an awful lot really. And that has been one of the biggest surprises of the channel is the, the level of interaction with um, everyone else. It's been wonderful and that's all down to you. So thank you. <sighs> 10 years, blimey. Well, here we are at National Library of Wales, a fantastic structure. It um, contains pretty much all books ever published, but we have a slight issue. Yes, they have many chargers, but these ones appear to be disabled only. So uh, that's a bit of a problem. And uh, when you come and look at them, uh, they're 75 kilowatts, which is nice and powerful, but they're CCS. Uh, CCS is not what the LEAF is. The LEAF is kind of a bit Betamax, he uses Chademo, uh, which very few other people do. Most are CCS, so that is a problem. I believe you can get converters, but uh, I don't believe we've got a converter with this car. And there are fast chargers where you use your own cable, but uh, at a guess, they're going to be an awful lot slower. Um, that won't be a, a rapid charger. That's a rapid charger. 75 kilowatts is punchy. Uh, that's probably more like six or eight somewhere around that, it would take hours to charge this car. Fortunately, I do know of other chargers, but uh, I'm starting to have the fears that uh, they might be CCS as well. So all we can do is go and explore. Oh, I should add, there are actually a lot more chargers. Most of them are simple fast. There are a couple of rapids here that are more normal parking, but as you can see, uh, 
one of the cars along this lineup is plugged in and charging. The rest are ice cars blocking the chargers. So um, that's not great. Charger number two here at the university blocked. And uh, that's only just started charging. But look, oh no, they're up to 76%. Maybe they're coming back, but uh, let's move on. Try again. Charge two here at Lidl, blocked. And it looks like that's only just started. Marvellous. Tesco, one rapid charger, blocked. Oh, well that didn't get any better, but thankfully I now have a cup of tea. Uh, I'm here in the M&S Cafe, how posh. I went to the Tesco one earlier today. Disappointing tea, the M&S tea proving more satisfactory, albeit an extra 60 pence. But yeah, came back to Tesco again, and by this stage the rapid charger was free. So that's 40 minutes of driving around trying to find a charger. Odd, or rather ironic to think, I was having less charging trouble 10 years ago. Albeit I could only charge at home on a free pin plug, so it basically had to charge overnight. Somehow I managed to do 350 miles in that first leaf in a week. Uh, literally, if it wasn't on charge, I was driving it and I just put miles and miles on it. It's a sign of how my life has changed, but um, I've not really been able to do that this time um, because of just family stuff, uh, preparing a certain Daihatsu charade and uh, doing driver training, which we can't do in the leaf. Um, yeah, I haven't actually driven it that much at all. Probably only about 200, 250 miles. Albeit we've still got two days to go. But uh, yeah, the charging situation is just depressing. It just spoils the EV experience entirely. I know rural Aberystwyth area is not perhaps the best indication, but uh, I, you know, I've been to other places with electric cars and been charger blocked. It's just one of those things that happens. Uh, very disappointing when it does happen, but there we are. Um, electric cars still really only make best sense if you can charge at home. If you're relying on public chargers, you're going to get blocked and uh, it's going to cost almost as much money as a petrol diesel, which rather spoils the point of it all. But uh, yeah, an interesting end to this. Um, we shall finish off this um, 10 year celebration once I finish my tea. I've always wanted to do a shot on an escalator just for the dynamics that it um, gives the shot. So um, there you go, that's me coming down the escalator. We're gonna go and see what sort of charge is in the car after my tea break. So my tea break took 23 minutes. We've got the battery back up to 52%. I might just wait a little bit longer. 16 and a half kilowatt hours has gone in. Unfortunately, um, the charge point is outside. So um, not undercover. I'm currently getting rained on. I think there's an awful lot of electricity going through that cable right there and it's raining. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what this costs. I don't think this tells you the price. So you just kind of find out afterwards. So they've also got pod points again for the slower charging. That's not what we're about. We want all of the juice. Look, in the time we're talking, we're up to 54%. So I think I might just get in the car. There we go then, folks. We are aboard and uh, I'm just going to fire it up, which I can do by doing that. It'll tell me the charge plug is connected. That's okay. We don't mind. Uh, let's pop the interior light on if I can. There we go. Light everything up. So that's where we are at the moment on the charging. So we're at 54%, uh, another 14 minutes, and it'll get up to 80%. And it's that last bit that always takes the longest. And really, that is the beauty of the bigger battery. Uh, look, we already reckons we've got enough range for 123 miles. It's the fact you don't have to fill the battery. You just put the juice in when you can, and you're not having to run it right down to the bottom, which isn't good for it. And you're not having to fill it up to 100% every time, which isn't good for it. 10 years ago, I was having to completely... Um, fill the thing uh, every single time and uh, I'll just go through the control so yeah there's the um, gear selector and then here we've got the e-pedal um, if you haven't used the e-pedal you really should it just makes life so much easier it's got automatic reverse parking and uh, maybe I should use that because uh, I failed my driving test my mock driving test with DGN driving school uh, on the reverse park it's exactly the same HVAC as the uh, previous generation, but I can sit here with the um, heated seat on while I'm waiting. We've got a slightly old school setup here. I think it is the same. Um, th this screen looks familiar. It may be a mild upgrade from um, what we had 10 years ago, but it does sort of feel familiar. So um, you can see, turning off the climate control, 
um, will give me an additional four miles. So there's all sorts of utter rubbish going around on the internet at the moment, especially on Facebook, saying that electric cars don't have heaters, and if you do use them, that's all your range gone. And if you're in a traffic jam and you get stuck, you will freeze to death because you can't use the heater. Codswallop. Look how much energy the heater is using. It's not using very much at all. And the heater is running while we're charging here. It's just crazy. It's just the misinformation. Are EVs perfect? No. We've shown that very well that yet again, the experience is being spoiled by the lack of chargers. And that appears to be a constant as it has been since the very first time I drove one 10 years ago. But um, fundamentally, EVs are not going to save the planet, but they do offer genuine improvement in some places like driving around cities. And uh, they are very nice to drive. And I'm sorry car people, a lot of petrol heads will find that hard to stomach, but they are. I really like driving electric. Um, I, I still like my engines, don't get me wrong, but uh, yeah, I love the experience. But yeah, more buttons than you can shake a stick at on the steering wheel. I don't know what most of them do. I haven't been able to get the cruise control to work properly. I think it's got adaptive cruise, so you can set the distance to the car in front. I've not managed to get that working at all. Uh, not that we really have any roads suitable for it. The auto wipers, a bit rubbish. I find you have to keep um, uh, twiddling the stalk to get them to actually auto properly. So um, if, it, if it won't wipe and you need it to, just give that a wiggle and then the wipers go. And uh, again, I can do that, I can sit here um, with all this stuff going on. So we're up to 131 miles in the time I've been talking. So that's how quick a rapid charger is. They really don't hang about. And uh, now 27 minutes, we're on 58%. So um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna keep going. I might as well spend another 10 minutes here. Get her all the way up to 80%. That'd be good because I have some experimenting to do. Um, because of this ridiculous post saying that if you use the heater, you'll die in a traffic jam. I'm planning to spend quite a lot of hours in this car, parked up somewhere, and I'm just going to sit in it with the heater, and we're going to see what it does to the range. I'm genuinely curious. Because, you know, obviously if you do the same thing in a petrol or diesel car, it'll also diminish the range, but it's much harder to measure that. But, uh, yeah, should be fun finding out. But otherwise, um, I think that's probably us done for um, this initial look at 10 years of Hubnut with um, electric cars. So I'm gonna say thanks for watching. Thanks so much for your support. I'm sorry this has got very long winded. I've been looking at the um, times of the videos I've been generating today and uh, yeah, it's um, quite extensive. I didn't really mean to talk for quite so long, but that's how Hubnut has always been. Even when it was classic Hub, I just turned the camera on, started talking and it became a video. And some of you like that. And for that, I am very, very grateful. So thank you for your continued support. Thanks especially to the channel members and patrons who support us with a small donation every month. $1.99 for the channel members. Patreon, you can pick your amount. And we'll look forward to seeing you in a future video. Bye. It's a good pattern. There we go. Look at that. Good overlap. No triangle of doom.